I'm here at New Orleans with uh, Jack Newton and uh, good kickoff, I'd say so. Thank uh, you. Wouldn't, wouldn't you? <laughs> it felt good to me and got a lot of positive response from the the audience that seemed to be liking what they're hearing and the the kind of roadmap we're mapping out for the next decade. I think they're excited about. Yeah, I mean, they can get excited by just walking on the road. I mean, every year it gets bigger and bigger. So if you're yeah, coming, the energy they, level's pretty high. Yeah, the energy level's high. I mean, you 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 said, okay, who's been here for just a fifth year? A fifth uh, year. Yeah, that's right. Who's been here? You know. Since the first year, people raise their hand. You go, oh, "That's it's probably the 200 that were there." Exactly, <laughs> but exactly. It looked, but it looked like a really small group. Those 200, because we're sitting in a room that probably had, you know, probably closer to 50 and more than a thousand people. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was a very full room. Uh, really, and the, it gets electric. You know, it's really fun. I'm sure it's electric for you. I mean, you you put up the picture of you and Ryan sitting there side by side at a what looked like a uh, card table. <laughs> yeah, maybe <laughs> a tech show. I and mean, you're sitting up on the stage. I mean, how does it feel to you when you walk up on a stage that big of a room, huge screens on both sides, you know, where Cleo's name is in, in lights? I mean, what yeah, that, it, what's that mean to you? I mean, it, it makes me really proud, for one. Uh, it feels surreal, so I, I feel like I need to pit, <laughs> pinch myself sometimes. If you went back and told the Jack and Ryan of 2008 <laughs> that Cleo would turn into this, I right. don't think either of us would, would have believed you. You know, certainly... Right. Uh, you know, a success beyond what our our wildest ambitions were are were both on the software side. You know, the product has right. become so big, but also with with CleoCon. You know, we never we never really thought of doing a, a conference until that light bulb moment five years ago, where we realized right. that we felt like the legal industry kind of needs something like this, where we get together with our customers and help invent what the future of law looks like together. And and I'm really uh, over and above what we've achieved with the product, really proud of what CleoCon has turned into. Yeah, I mean, you, you come in, the, we're sitting in the Hyatt Regency in New Orleans. You know, long before you were born, these were the Taj Mahals. Right. Uh, it, and you've got signs for Cleo at all doors. Yeah. So I come back from a run this morning, and I'm coming in the back door, and it's, is this the right place? Oh, yeah, I guess it is. Yeah. CleoCon. You, know. oh, you should have come with me and Ed. <laughs> uh, I, I didn't realize you were running this morning. We'll, we'll go oh, tomorrow, yeah. maybe. No, but you got the signs uh, yeah. everywhere on the outside of the hotels, inside the hotels. You've taken over the place. You, you said something that was pretty powerful uh, today. It'll dovetail into what you're doing on the, uh, I don't know if it was called the Innovation Fund or Developers Fund, but that uh, legal tech innovation, legal tech development will run through Cleo. Right. What do you mean by that? Powerful statement. What I mean by that is that what Cleo provides to our customers and to the legal space as a whole, we want to be a foundation upon which other legal startups and legal innovators are building on top of. With a view to, you know, one, helping them accelerate their product development so they don't need to reinvent the wheel when it comes to basic things like matter management and time and billing, but also it's a huge benefit to our customers in that they get access to this innovation, uh, this innovation and, and, and wealth of development resources being delivered to them uh, in, 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 this tremendous, in this tremendous way that wasn't available to them in, in the past. And I, I didn't talk about this uh, in the keynote, but the, the third benefit is to actually the developer in the sense that finding your initial customers is one of the hardest things for any startup. And with Clio, we're able to say... Unless you blog. We have, yeah, unless you blog. <laughs> but, you know, unless you're, unless you're 37 Signals or, or Basecamp, whatever their name is today, you, you can't... You can't easily build a customer base. Right. And the message we're able to send to developers is, we have a community of 150,000 sophisticated, cloud savvy, technology savvy, uh, legal sure. professionals that you can tap into through Clio as a channel. And it, it, it's another flywheel. I talked a lot about flywheel today. It's another virtuous cycle where we'll start seeing the most innovation happening on the Clio platform. We'll get more customers on the platform thanks to that. Then we'll have even more uh, developers and resources to uh, building p solutions for Clio customers, and this virtuous cycle just continues. And, and it's critical that this go on when we're talking about legal tech startups, because I, I mean, I've started one company, sold it to LexisNexis, and I hate to say it, but it feels like that's where technology goes to die. Right? Yeah. Because, because the development just isn't doesn't get to continue to be done in that type of environment. It doesn't attract the developers that's that right. you can attract. That's I mean, right, yeah. I met your, your new head of engineering uh, that came in from Shopify. Shopify, like, that's right, yeah. You know, coming in from Ottawa, Shopify, moving his family across the country after spending time with you, looks at the tremendous advantages. I mean, 
I just don't see the traditional legal technology companies being able to land that type of talent. I think that's impossible. And then you, when you when you have to get something right, and like when you and Ryan are starting it, you don't have the alternative. <laughs> No, to you, blow it. I mean, you no, you're just, doing everything. Just get it done. <laughs> you have to get it done. You have to get it out there. We have to go to New York. We have to be able to talk about it. Yeah. We have to go to the ABA Tech Show. We have to talk about it. You get it done. You get an attitude going. That's hard to compete with for other companies. It is. It is. Very we much so. talking about that. So your idea of the, I mean, let's talk about the development fund that you're, that you're starting with. Another way to help uh, these legal tech entrepreneurs. Talk about that for a second. So we... We thought, we've seen success with the platform to this point, but the, the question we asked, and one of the terms we use at Clio a lot is, how do we 10x this? How do we take it from where it is today and make it 10 times bigger, faster, better, however, what, yep. whatever dimension you want to move, but how, how, how can we 10x the platform? And we said, you know, it, one of the ways we could do this is doing two things. We, we launched uh, a fund the Clio Developer Fund, which you're referring to, right. which is a million dollar fund where we'll be able to deploy capital to innovative technology companies, innovative legal tech startups uh, in a very tactical way. And that, that could be a way of equity investment. Yep. That could be non-dilutive, non-equity investment where we just say, we love what you're, you're doing. We think you're strategic. Here's some money. <laughs> Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, it could be co-marketing funds where we uh, we, we bring them to market and help support them raising their profile in trade shows or maybe it's Google AdWords or whatever the case might be. So really a, a kind of a Swiss Army knife yeah. investment vehicle that we can deploy to help out people that we think are strategic to our grand vision. And the second piece we announced today, uh, an entirely separate fund uh, or, or prize fund uh, rather is the launch code competition. And with the launch code competition, uh, the, the, the starting pistol went off in the keynote uh, and a year from today at the Clio Cloud Conference uh, 2018 we're going to announce a winner of a hundred thousand dollar prize for the developer that builds the best new integration against the Clio platform using the new API version 4 toolkit. So between those two initiatives we think that this is uh, I mean already receiving an unbelievable amount of interest even from the, the partners that are on the floor here in terms of how they participate in that and I have every confidence we'll, uh, we'll come back next year feeling like we did really 10x the platform thanks to that investment. Yeah, I, mean, you, you, I mean, when you use the term platform, I use, I, I'll lay it down for my team and I'll say, think of a puzzle. You know, you've got your, your, your female ends, you've got your male ends. We just want people to be able to clip onto this with yep. APIs, plugins, whatever it might be. I mean, that idea of investing like you just described it in multiple ways in other technologies, you're right, is going to increase the value of your platform 10x. Just think of all this additional value that is coming to your customers by what other people are doing. Because you can't think about all that stuff every, exactly. every day. You exactly. You can't think about, oh, gee, what is this payment system that they're going to use over here? What's this publishing system that they can use over here? What's this other system that they can use over here? Everything in the practice of law. And you'll be able to plug in, in uh, legal research into those type of things. It's fascinating what, you, what you're doing. It's right. very impressive. And it lets us focus on the core Clio experience right. that benefits all of our customers <laughs> and let this unbelievable ecosystem tackle uh, you know, the various needs that, that customers have that aren't part of that core experience. Uh, look at examples of what's launching today. We, we have no intentions of ever building e-discovery directly into Clio, <laughs> but we're able to do Perfect, we're back. Okay. We didn't know we were talking about Apollo. I mean, before we get to Apollo completely, completely your engineering uh, resources tied up, but even, even companies like us, so we look at Clio and we say, um, gee, all these people are going to have to intake their information through a web presence. <coughs> Gee, we should, one way we can contribute to the Clio ecosphere is, you know, we've got where WordPress shop at the core. Let's build plugins. Right. We'll build a plugin so that people can put this on their websites, blogs, whatever, that can bring the information into Clio. Absolutely, so, yeah. And so we're, and then people come to me and they'll say, well, well, don't you sell this? And I go, why would we sell it? Uh, it's an ecosystem that we're making our platform more valuable by getting our things out there where it can be retrieved into environments where they're already operating. This could become, you could be quite a magnet. Uh, well, we, 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 hope, we hope it's a game changer. Yeah. And again, part of that grand vision of transforming the practice of the law for good, 
is going to we're going to need some friends to get there, and, and the platform is a great way to do it. Let me talk to you about Apollo for for a second, and, and I could relate to it because we were doing things in a way that probably couldn't scale forever, and and it was our tech team led by Josh Lynch that said hey, we're going to have to redo the entire thing and just basically build an entire new platform, and for me. I didn't understand really fully the impact of it until we were about three quarters of the way through, which probably scared the hell out of those guys because they were thinking about the money, 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 and manpower we invested in it. Um, I got to visit with you a couple weeks ago on, on Apollo. Um, sounded similar, but on a much, much larger scale based on the amount of right. measures that you have. But tell me what the vision was behind Apollo and what you're driving with Apollo. So we've been building and iterating on Clio for nine years right. uh, and one of the comments I made in the, the keynote was that you know software ages in dog years. Nine year old <laughs> software is, is like a 60 year old man and uh, or woman for that matter and, and you need to you need to kind of do a, a pretty big reinvention. The, the technologies that are available today uh, simply didn't exist nine years ago. The kind of user experience we right. could build from the ground up uh, if, if we're rebuilding Clio today uh, we're game changers, you know, from a user experience standpoint. So there's the technology side of things where we said there's a bunch of new technologies we need to pull into Clio, and that requires a pretty fundamental re-engineering effort, which the tech guys call re-platforming, which means you, you know basically re re rebuilding the back end, rebuilding the front end of Clio, and creating a whole new right. technical stack that we're using to build the product. And that's that's a huge investment on its own but has, pays dividends in that we should be able to iterate faster in the future. The second piece of Apollo was, above and beyond the technology stack, was looking at nine years of feedback we received from customers, and we've received a lot. <laughs> and while we've been continuously integrating that feedback into, into Clio over the last nine years, there's some things that require stepping back and kind of saying, you know what, this is going to be more of a down-to-the-studs type renovation. This isn't us just adding a new button or a new checkbox or tweaking the way a feature works, but really reinventing how certain parts of the application work. And that was the second piece of what we accomplished with Apollo, which, uh, which is the reason we talk about it as a reinvention of Clio and a thoughtful reinvention of Clio in that we're incorporating really important aspects of technical advancement as well as this ground up rethinking of how features work into into the Apollo project, and that's what we announced today with the, the new Clio experience. And you know, customers are already accessing it and already sharing a lot of excitement around what they're seeing. You, you saw some yeah. of the responses in the keynote. I heard a few hallelujahs. Yeah. I saw people punching into the air. There's, <laughs> no, there's, there's a lot about, of excitement. You know, yeah. here's, new, here's the old interface, here's the new, and, and I, the person in front of me that jumped right up, very excited about just that. Like, yeah. like that she yeah. struggled with the previous experience. And then you talk about the speed, and I know exactly what you mean, that it provides you the platform to build on. So you have that, that platform to continue to grow and to grow on, on Apollo without working with something that can present a lot of technical debt. Uh, now you really, you, it's very cool what you've done. Uh, you know, the core name of, of the company is Themis, named after what? The, the Greek god of truth and justice. Okay, and what's Cleo? Cleo is the Greek muse of history. And Apollo. Apollo is the Greek <laughs> god of light and healing. So I've, I've got it all down. Uh, I'm a Greek mythology fan, so we've got code names for uh, every project you could think of with, uh, with appropriate Greek uh, gods and deities and, and muses. It's a so, rich well. So, so the Lexblog fans, could, they could, you know, our, we have a CTO that's a fan of a donut chain. You know, so we have things like apple fritter and chocolate fritter. I'm feeling very intimidated <laughs> compared to Greek goddesses. I'm trying to put donuts next to these things on the screen. I'm thinking, so, no, no, it works. <laughs> well, hey, even, even Google names their their code names after candy bars for for Android. So you're, you're not alone. You're not alone. Fair enough. Hey, this was great. Um, I appreciate your time. Well, thanks for um, having me. I mean, like I said, you guys have taken over uh, this this place. I mean, it's an amazing thing to realize what you have going on here because right now there, there are other technology conferences even going on and I'm very glad that I'm here. Well, thanks and, for being and, here. And the real missing audience that, that, that even should be here and was being talked about on Twitter was even large law um, because the innovation field, the drive, the enthusiasm, it's very contagious should be felt by, by that community as well. Well, I'm glad to hear that. To see that. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kevin.